Uh, hello, hello everybody. Great to be back. Um, I love Do, one of my favorite conferences, uh, especially in the sunshine. And uh, I spoke here last year. I was just curious to know if anyone heard me speak last year. Anyone heard my talk? A couple of hands. Thank goodness I'm doing a completely different talk today. So uh, uh, I wrote one especially for, for Do, given we've got this startup theme going on. Uh, I've never given it before, so uh, bear with me. Uh, it, uh, who knows what's going to happen over the next 15 minutes or so. So um, what I thought I'd talk about today is uh, 10 tips for building a killer startup. And uh, why me? Why, why should I talk about this? Well, I've been um, creating startups pretty much my whole life, ever since I was a, a little kid. Uh, I was one of those very annoying kids that was always washing cars. Um, I uh, had a computer games magazine. I did a BMX stunt show. I dug up a, a hole in my parents' back garden to try and breed koi carp, <laughs> which, didn't work, which didn't, didn't work out very well. And then I've done a few other startups. And uh, many, many, in fact, most of them haven't been killer. They've been uh, a bit disastrous. And I, I've made pretty much every mistake in the book uh, along my uh, various roller coaster journeys. And I've, I've learned. Uh, I've learned an odd thing along the way. So I want to share just some of the, the 10 most uh, interesting, whimsical, silly, hopefully useful things um, that I've uh, encountered. But before we dive in, for those that don't know my background, just going to do a quick 60-second whistle-stop tour on uh, what I've been up to since I left university um, and some of my more recent startups. Created an online retail business called Hotbox. We registered the domain hotbox.co.uk to sell our crazy products. Hotbox.com in the US was one of the world's largest porn sites, which uh, <laughs> was very awkward. So we changed the name to Firebox and continued selling all sorts of weird and wonderful toys and gadgets. Uh, the breakthrough at Firebox came when we decided to make chess more exciting. We created uh, the thinking man's drinking game, alcohol chess. Every time you capture a piece, you have to drink it. So there's this wonderful inbuilt handicap system. Uh, that's, that's my friend Tom, who doesn't normally look like that, but um, I just sacrificed my queen, which was three shots. Uh, and that, that product did really well and helped Firebox grow, so that was a, that was a fun business. Then my real um, big passion has always been games ever since I was little. Love video games, and so I created a company called Mind Candy to uh, splash around in the, the gaming space. First game we created was something called Perplex City, global treasure hunt. We buried a 100,000 pound treasure. Uh, we released clues and story across different media. And uh, creatively, it was one of the most amazing things I've done. Commercially, it was one of the most disastrous. And I lost, uh, <laughs> lost uh, millions of pounds of investors' money. Uh, then we did a, an almighty pivot into something called Moshi Monsters, which has done uh, much better. <laughs> we have 80 million kids around the world uh, who've registered to play that, and toys and books and a film coming out this year. Uh, last year, I launched a, a business because I've been running around with startups. I thought I'd calm down a little and uh, uh, co-founded a business called Calm.com, which is a, a great way to, to relax using your phone or a website. And then uh, the Daily Spank, <laughs> which um, isn't, <laughs> isn't isn't quite as dodgy as it sounds. Uh, it's sort of like Instagram meets um, kind of uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, sort of photo sharing made fun. So there we go, that's uh, my background. Now on, to, uh, now on to the tips. So the first one we're gonna start with is this. Make beautiful mistakes. And uh, what on earth does this mean? Surely screwing up and, and making mistakes is a bad thing. Well. Now, I think it's important, really important, we embrace our mistakes, that we uh, celebrate them. We wear them as scar tissue. Um, your screw-ups are valuable steps on the journey to finding out what does work. They're really, really valuable lessons. And I think the most beautiful mistakes of all are the ones that we do fastest. It's really important to fail fast. Um, and the example here I'm going to use is, is our experience from Perplex City, which was this epic alternate reality game we created, this big treasure hunt. It took us a year and a half to build, and, uh, and then it took us a year after we actually launched it to figure out that it didn't actually work, that, that people didn't want to play this game in the way they, we thought they did. And uh, if I could go back, I'd have done it in a much lighter, iterative, more agile way. So, um, and this is one of the beautiful things about building digital products. We can fail multiple times a day and uh, get closer to finding out what works until we get product market fit. So this is an important one. The second one uh, was some advice given to me by one of my investors. In the early days, I used to come to board meetings 
kind of spewing a rainbow of ideas and uh, kind of nonstop bursting with all these different ways we could do things and new concepts. And one of my investors took me aside and said, um, he said this, basically, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And I think what he was trying... <laughs> And I was like, didn't quite sink in originally. And then I think I realized he was saying, you know, we've given you a hell of a lot of money <laughs> to, uh, to build a business that you told us you are going to build. Just get on and build that bloody business and focus. And I think it's uh, extremely, extremely important to do one thing really, really well. Look at Google in the early days. They decided to focus super deep on search, and they nailed that. And, uh, and then, obviously, they've been able to kind of spread out in different areas. If you're trying to juggle multiple things, you usually end up uh, dropping balls. So luckily, at Mind Candy now, I've got uh, an amazing co-pilot, Davinia Knowles, who's in the crowd, uh, our COO. And she reins me in. She stops me kind of racing off with all the shiny new things I want to do and focusing on the core stuff. Number three. What's your story? I love storytelling. It's really, really important, understanding what makes it a great story. Human beings use stories to share and uh, to, uh, to communicate and uh, to spread messages. And it's, it's really important in a startup as well. You know, when you're telling your, your story of your startup to a journalist, they want to know the human aspect, the emotional side of things, not necessarily the raw data and all the statistics. And uh, there are so many make great examples out there. We've heard a little bit about Innocent when they went to the, the fate and had the two buckets. Yes, we should launch this business. No, we shouldn't. Uh, the guy that created eBay, his story was that he wanted to buy some uh, Pez dispensers for his girlfriend and couldn't find any, so uh, decided to create uh, eBay. And there's many, many others. And if you're up on stage and, and you're asked to, to tell um, uh, information about your startup, don't give a a presentation, tell a story. Everyone will be much more engaged and interested. And connected to that, number four, if you are up on stage uh, telling your story or, or giving a presentation, it's always good in your slide deck to include a picture of a kitten. Uh, <laughs> it's probably, probably the, the most important lesson. Um, uh, so, and, and this is, uh, no, more, more importantly than that, dream, dream big. You know, life, life is short. Good to have big, big, big dreams. And uh, when I was little, uh, I stumbled across this book, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. And uh, um, it's all very common sense. But when you read it, you realize it's, it's really, really powerful. Most people just have very modest aims. They never shoot, shoot for the stars. And uh, you know, Disney, one of my heroes, used to say, if you don't have uh, dreams, how can your dreams come true? And I think it's extremely important. And a company needs dreams as well. Uh, a vision is kind of like the dreams for a, a company. And uh, it can change over the years as, as you change what you do. But a vision is, is vital because it allows new people wanting to join your business to figure out what you're all about. It also allows all the current employees to rally around some big, big cause that's greater than uh, the individuals them, themselves. And uh, at Mind Candy, um, we have a, a big vision to create the greatest entertainment company in the world for this digital generation. Now, some people we're trying to hire will run a mile <laughs> when they hear that. That's a bit crazy and, and ridiculous. Some people love it and, and embrace it. And uh, it's called, a, we call it a BHAG, which is a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, we didn't coin that phrase. It's from a, a brilliant book called Good to Great. But um, really important, as I say, that companies have uh, big, big visions. Next up is uh, to say yes to parties. <laughs> um, not necessarily parties like this. This is from a, a film called Project X, uh, where the party was so wild they, they burnt down an entire neighborhood. Um, but yes to, yes to events, yes to conferences like this, yes to dinners, yes to opportunities where you're going to meet other like-minded people on, on similar journeys. And I think it's really important to, to let your hair down, to have fun on your, your adventure. Um, the journey is, is often uh, more important than the reward. And I think getting away from your desk uh, is often where the most exciting stuff happens. And I love events. You know, Many I've been to over the years. I've met amazing um, employees. I've met some of my investors. I've even met a, a girlfriend at a, a conference um, and was quote. <laughs> 
I think she's out there somewhere. Um, I was quoted in the Daily Mail the other day saying that uh, conferences can be romantic. So um, I think do certainly is. And you know, I think there's a bit of a misconception with networking events. A lot of people shy away from them because it's all about shoving your business card in someone's face and walking up to someone and saying, what do you do? And I think if you approach it a different way and, and meet people first as, as people, and uh, connect with them and uh, be silly and get a bit of banter going before you dive into um, asking them what they do. Um, unless you live in LA where things are very different. You have to go straight in for the kill. Um, next, number six, is to work hard and be nice to people. We've got this sign up in our office and I, I love it. Um, working hard is obvious. You know, we all know that building a startup is an incredibly tough and you've really got to roll your sleeves up. But um, the, the people bit is crucial. When you boil business down to its kind of core, it really is just all about people. Uh, people that you're trying to bring on board to hire or to inspire or customers who you're trying to, uh, to kind of sell and, and promote your products to. And um, really understanding what, what makes people tick is, is crucial. In the early days when I was uh, running my businesses, I used to think IQ was the most Im important thing when bringing people on board. I'd look at people's academic record and uh, try and figure out how smart they were. And I realized that's not true. Far more important is EQ, emotional quotient. Um, your ability to, to have empathy, to understand what someone is thinking, to really kind of uh, click with people. Mark Zuckerberg. Um, Obviously studied uh, computer science at, uh, at, at university, at, at Harvard, um, but not many people know he also studied psychology. And I think the, the fascinating mix between those two has enabled him to build one of the world's um, uh, most fascinating uh, successful businesses. Um, I love reading books. These are just a couple on the subject. Uh, body language, very important. Uh, predictably irrational, lots of uh, counterintuitive thoughts. The one on the end, if, if you read nothing else from this talk, that's uh, an amazing one I highly recommend. Uh, the psychology of persuasion, the science behind why uh, we want to do certain things or buy certain things. Really, really powerful book. Uh, use it for good, not evil, <laughs> uh, is, is my advice on that one. Next up is to stay hungry and stay foolish. This is a famous Steve Jobs quote. I think he gave it at a commencement address at Stanford um, many years ago. And uh, the stay hungry bit is, is the one I want to kind of uh, mention here. It's vital. You know, when you're launching a new startup, you have to be passionate about it. You're going to be thinking about it and dreaming about it. And it's vital that you dive in deep, that you're hungry for every single little bit of information you can get your hands on. Uh, track down and speak to experts in that industry. Attend trade shows. Read every book you can get your hands on. Read the blogs. Um, go super, super deep and, and dive around. Because building a, a startup or, or creating a new product is, is a little bit like trying to put together a very complex jigsaw. And all the little fragments of information you get are the, the pieces. And little by little, at the start, it's very confusing. Suddenly, they start clicking together, and it starts making sense. And uh, only if you're super hungry can you go through and persevere and, and make that work. Next, number eight, is to trust your instinct. You know, I've noticed this. A lot of very successful people, and particularly entrepreneurs, really, really believe in their gut instinct, their hunch. We heard about that earlier. And uh, as human beings, we, uh, we absorb some information consciously. Uh, we absorb a hell, of, a hell of a lot more subconsciously. You know, we're taking in stuff in our peripheral vision. We're hearing stuff that we may not consciously uh, be aware of. And our brain is processing all this. And the way it feeds back to us is through that feeling in the pit of your stomach. And uh, it's vital to listen to it in business, especially when you meet someone new and you know you get that feeling, whether you think, I really like this person or I don't like them, that's your gut instinct. And it's important to, to listen to it. And some people dismiss this as uh, a bit fluffy and a bit woolly and, and mumbo jumbo, but um, I know it certainly worked for me. And there's been a lot of uh, science and research done on this. There was one I was reading about the other day where scientists uh, got some people to sit in front of a computer screen and uh, there were two columns of, of numbers that were rapidly flowing down the screen, almost matrix style. So they couldn't quite consciously see what those uh, numbers were. Uh, they certainly couldn't add them up. And at the end, they asked them to say which of the two columns um, added up to the larger sum. And uh, I think it was about 85 to 90% of people got the right column. So that's your brain definitely seeing stuff that, that you're not fully aware of. Next up, 
keep it simple. I love this uh, graphic. We've got this up. <laughs> Got this up on the wall of our office as well. Um, I love simplicity. You know, many of the best products in the world are incredibly simple and really easy to understand. When was the last time you bought something and, and stopped to read the instruction manual? Um, look at Apple, the grand masters of simplicity. They create products that a grandparent or a three-year-old child can, can pick up and use. And that's the kind of gold standard. Uh, in the old days, back in the, the kind of search engine wars, uh, remember the Yahoo homepage, just blinking lights everywhere, huge amount of information crammed in there and, and a search box that you had to try and find. And then Google, big white page, just a, a small number of words. And uh, obviously Google was, was much more successful. Instagram is another great example. I love that product. And they work, like many companies, they work on new re feature releases. They figure out what new stuff they can put into their product to make it better. And uh, occasionally they put out releases where they take stuff away and they, they do a big exciting new release uh, with less going on and often they'll see an uptick in their numbers. This is something I saw the other day when I was uh, looking for a good example of simplicity. Um, I was playing table tennis in a friend's office and he had uh, a robo robotic table tennis serving machine. I didn't even know they existed. And I thought, oh, I wouldn't mind trying that. And then I looked at it <laughs> and I thought, oh my God. How, where, where? I, I couldn't even find the on button, but, um, but there's, yes. Four levels of spin C, speed C, um, things didn't even know what was going on. Anyway, so don't build products like that. And we heard about this uh, a little bit early, the whole idea of um, MVP. Eric Ries has been talking about this in his brilliant book, uh, The Lean Startup. Don't cram everything in the kitchen sink into your product. Try and figure out what is the minimal viable product that you can launch. Again, stay lean and agile because you shouldn't be building stuff that you think your audience wants. You should build stuff that they actually want. And you only find that out when you put something into the, into the, uh, the live environment. So finally, uh, when you run out of uh, kitten pictures in your presentation, use a puppy. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> This is, uh, this is some advice uh, one of our new directors at Mind Candy uh, gave us. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. And uh, again, the best entrepreneurs just get on with it. They roll up their sleeves. They don't wait for someone to say you can do that. Uh, they often sail a little bit close to the wind. Uh, they definitely don't ask for, for permission. There are many examples of, of this. Um, Simon Woodruff from Yo Sushi gives uh, a great one. Um, when he was setting up Yosushi, this kind of very experimental new Japanese sushi conveyor belt restaurant in, in London, he wrote to a lot of uh, Japanese companies and uh, he said, would you mind uh, endorsing my new business? And um, uh, wrote a little bit about it. And then the final paragraph, he said, I know you're probably extremely busy. I'll assume if I don't hear back from you that you give it your full support. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, no one wrote back to him, and then he was able to tell everyone in London that so Sony loves it, and uh, Mitsubishi and Toyota are all behind it. And uh, so, um, yeah, asking for forgiveness, not permission. Hustle, really, really important part of, of being an entrepreneur. So that's uh, my 10 slightly random, slightly whimsical uh, tips. Of course, as any great writer knows, once you know rules, uh, then you're at liberty to, to break them. So feel free <laughs> to do the opposite on any of those. Um, but uh, important to, to understand them, first of all. And uh, creating a, a killer startup is, uh, is not easy. Um, it's scary. It's stressful. It's intense. It can be really, really chaotic. Uh, but it's also one of the most exciting, challenging, rewarding things you can ever do. So for any of you taking the plunge, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much.